Hello, my name is Jose Hernandez Ferrayo. I'm a professor at Technical University of Valencia, and I've been uh, doing research on AI for uh, quite a long time. But apart from that, I'm also teaching courses uh, with my students at the university, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some ideas, remarks about exactly this use of AI in education and especially in evaluation. So, um, so there's a lot of um, discussion about AI and education, and of course, a lot of uh, discussion about AI and work. And of course, these two things are related because education serves more than just uh, preparing people for work, but preparing people for life and to understand the world. But uh, in uh, with the use of new um, tools coming from AI, things are changing very quickly. And I'm going just to uh, mention some uh, ideas uh, uh, from my own experience as a researcher and also as a lecturer. So what I see is that students are using AI already. So it's not that we need to prepare them for a future where they will use AI. They are using AI even more than us. They're using them for uh, their assignments, for preparing their courses, and so in the everyday and asking questions to these assistants rather than asking questions to us or even just looking uh, in um, looking at, uh, up things in books or some other sources, some traditional sources. And of course, we have these uh, questions such as will AI take our jobs or even uh, will AI take uh, or will white uh, lecturers and, and teachers um, uh, away completely because it will be automated. So this is kind of an extreme uh, vision. And of course, we need uh, to understand that there are many ways in which uh, AI can affect uh, education and jobs. Uh, so it's not only substitution that can happen, in many cases, augmentation, it can be a modification of the task or the job, or it might be a complete redefinition of the job, as we have seen in some, in many areas by the use of technology and computer science in particular. And we also need to understand different ways in which AI is applied uh, uh, or is used by humans. So we can have a system that we give uh, it an order and the system autonomously, uh, autonomously uh, completes the order, but we can see also some kind of a service or externalized cognition, such as a translation uh, system where we give a text and we get as a result the translated text. But there's also a, a situation where this AI is more coupled. The typical example when we use a, 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 a navigator or kind of a, a system to assist us uh, in, in, in moving around in the city, we feel that the desires were really just moving around the city, but assisted by these tools. So this is kind of a, a, a tightly coupling uh, a tight coupling between the tool and the human, and we we feel empowered. We can do more things than we than we could do before, and we don't uh, feel uh, alienated by the system is doing that instead of us. So it's basically this kind of a tight uh, collaboration. And of course, it would be ideal when uh, the tool can teach us to do something, and we don't need a tool anymore, so we don't have that dependency. But in general, this is not practical in many situations, especially when we're using very advanced AI or, or, or technologies that are using in some kind of uh, different sensors and some of the things that are really, um, they can really uh, make us um, augment our capabilities, but it would be very impossible, very difficult to internalize them. Of course, augmentation has an advantage, especially through exten extension, such as uh, we can deal with uh, a diversity of cognitive abilities in humans and we can even compensate for some uh, limitations but it has negative effects such as uh, if we don't use something this thing can become uh, atrophied or maybe what if we lose this uh, extension of this system or, or overnight or maybe a responsibility is not me as a tool 
or maybe we think that there's a DA that's too intrusive uh, for us. And a problem I'm going to discuss in a moment is how we're going to use them for assessment and for education. So we are in a context where AI is progressing, but it's progressing in an even way. So it is difficult to anticipate what is going to be the next big thing in AI. But in the long term, what we know is that many of the tasks that humans can do, they're, con they're going to be assisted, modified or replaced by AI systems. So, um, and this goes beyond what people are uh, used uh, to now, uh, from text to multimodal systems, and this will include video, and in the future also do, this will include attentional systems rather than just um, generative AI. But given this situation, what we see is that in evaluation, we still evaluate students in the classical way, no computers, no AI, because Maybe one reason is because they can cheat. Another reason is that we want to know that they can really solve the problem by themselves, not using another tool. But this is not the way they're going to work in the future. In the future, for instance, no programmer today is basically operating in the same way they used to uh, program five years ago. They have a lot of auto completion uh, tools, and on when when the systems are. Uh, or even with the system, they can basically write the program altogether. You only have to modify a few bits of the of the program. So all of this is changing the skills that we need as well. So it is not the same skills that we need for programming now than we used to need just a few years ago. So it's more like consistency, validate the results how they match in, in a bigger picture rather than basically this step by step, because for this step by step, these tools are quite good. So this is just uh, um, a, an illustration of what is coming. So um, preparing our students for today would also be a mistake. Of course, we don't know what is coming, but, but in a way, I think that the trend is that we have to focus on these skills about validating uh, consistency of the results uh, rather than just generated things. And in terms of evaluation, this is a challenge because, of course, if the future is that or the present is that people just work with AI for many tasks, we cannot evaluate uh, students in a way that is so different from what they are going to uh, operate in the real world. Of course, we don't want to allow them to have all possible connections because there's a possibility of, of cheating as well. But the solution is to be uh, to have a more personalized um, evaluation. But that's a challenge because this is not scalable. We need uh, uh, different uh, ratios between uh, uh, teachers and students. And of course, one possible solution is just to uh, assist teachers with AI as well. But of course, this is controversial as well, and we need to find the, the right way of doing this. So in a way, many challenges, uh, key ideas or some ideas or some reflections that have made about how AI is going to change uh, education, and especially how this has to change the way we evaluate students. Thank you very much.